The scripture reading is Romans chapter 8, verses 12 through 16. So then, brethren, we are under obligation not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you are living according to the flesh, you must die. But if by the Spirit you are putting to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are being led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you have not received a spirit of slavery leading to fear again, but you have received a spirit of adoption as sons by which we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit Himself testifies with our spirit that we are children of God. Amen. After a uh, golden light choir's praise, we will listen to the senior pastor's message. Brothers and sisters in Christ, this is the ninth session on the voice and guidance of the Holy Spirit. If we put on headphones and listen to loud music, we cannot hear we cannot even hear the voice of the person right next to you. In a similar way, if we have many fleshly thoughts, it's difficult for us to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit who is in us. We can hear the voice of the Holy Spirit clearly when we cast away fleshly thoughts. It is important to find out what kinds of fleshly thoughts we have and demolish them. So, we are learning what kinds of fleshly thoughts we are likely to have according to the different measures of faith. Today, I will continue to talk about the second level of fleshly thoughts, which are the thoughts that hinder us from obeying the Word of God. I pray in the name of the Lord that you will destroy all fleshly, fleshly thoughts as soon as you realize and recognize them so that you can hear the voice of the Holy Spirit clearly. Brothers and sisters in Christ, it is not true that we can clearly hear the voice of the Holy Spirit and obey it as soon as we accept the Lord. We can hear, we can hear the voice only to the extent that our heart is cultivated with the truth. In the first level of faith, and right after accepting the Lord, we, they have more knowledge of untruth than the knowledge of truth stored in, our, in their memories. They have only a small portion of truth cultivated in their hearts. Because of this, they are apt to think that it's difficult to live by the Word of God, and it is more comfortable for them to follow the old ways of life. Because of such fleshly thoughts, they cannot even hold to the most basic things in the life of faith. Because they do not know the truth yet, they don't even know that they have fleshly thoughts. In the second level of faith, they know the truth to some extent, and they try to live by the Word. But because they have a lot of untruth still in their hearts, they also have many fleshly thoughts. Many times, the voice of the Holy Spirit is blocked by these fleshly thoughts, and they do not obey the Word of God. In the last session, I talked about the cases where they pass judgment and condemnation with their fleshly thoughts. If they have a great many fleshly thoughts, they don't even realize the fact that they are passing judgment and condemnation. In these cases, they first have to try to realize their fleshly thoughts. Most of the fleshly thoughts of the second level of faith can be recognized and realized if you listen to the sermons carefully. If you hold fast to the word you hear and pray earnestly, the Holy Spirit will lead you to realize the thoughts more clearly. You are listening to this message. Now, what will you do after listening? How are you listening? You should listen carefully to the sermon. You should discover yourself, fleshly self, through the message. As the Apostle Paul said, I die, die daily, we should discover ourselves through the message. When you listen to the message, if you find yourself living by the message, you say, Amen, Amen. However, if you find yourself not living by the word or having untruth, evil, simple attributes, 
then it is the grace given to you. To discover such things, you listen to the message carefully. If you find something, it's grace. Also, if you discover yourself, it's the grace you received, then you should also pay back the grace. That is, you should try to cast off evil on truth since you found in you through the message. You attend Wednesday service, Sunday morning service, and evening service. Once you discover yourself through the messages, you have to cast them off. There are things you can cast off while listening to the message. And there are also things that you have to fight to cast off to the point of shedding blood. You have to keep those in mind and pray to cast them off in the Daniel prayer meeting and during the prayer personal prayer time. You may have personal prayer time, right? You should pray for such things to cast off. If you discover your untruth, listening to the message, cast such evil and sins for one month, two months, six months, and one year, then you will be a different person after such time. Your soul must be prosperous, your faith must grow, you must be very much different from the person one year before. Then you will love God more, your faith grew, you will be loved by God, so you will receive many answers from God. Those who were weak must, have, must become healthy. Those who were poor must become rich. You, receive, you will receive many answers. With the second level of faith, as your faith grows up a little bit more, you will be able to realize the thoughts within yourself. In the first level of faith, you cannot realize because you do not know the truth. Say, you heard about Peter. You can just assume it is the name of a person, but do not know who he is. But when you get to the second level of faith, you know that Peter is a chief disciple of Jesus, 12 disciples, and that he was crucified and martyred upside down. If your faith grows a little bit more within the second level of faith, you get to the level of finding yourself. You understand what passing judgment and condemnation is, and try to not to do it. Ah, judging others is a sin. Condemning others is a sin. God is the only judge who looks at the heart. So I'm committing a grave sin. You can realize and strive to cast off your sinful nature out of your heart. But if you are in a situation that draws it out, you still pass judgment and condemnation. It's because your fleshly thoughts are derived first from the untruths that you still have in you. The untruths such as a slanderous thought, hatred, and arrogance will be stimulated. Even though you try to drive away such fleshly thoughts, they keep coming to your mind. Just as you can't really stop the water that is strongly gushing out of a reserve here, the fleshly thoughts gush out from the accumulated untruths in your heart. For example, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18 tells us what believers ought to do. It says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. This is God's will in our Lord. What is it? Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in everything. This is the basis of a Christian. Most believers know this passage. There are even some others who know it as well, even though they don't uh, attend church. Many of you have it displayed in calligraphy in a frame. But even though you know the, the words very well, not all of you practice it. You sometimes are not joyful even though it tells us to rejoice always. Even though you try not to worry, the words just keep on coming into your mind. You worry about the physical things. You think and worry about what to eat and what to wear. What, when faced with trials, you lose your joy. If you realize your sins or you do not receive the answer to prayer, you become disheartened. But it is not the events of your everyday life that make, make you worry. It is just that the fleshly thoughts drove away joy from your heart. 
Those children of God who are saved must have joy in their heart all the time. Because they have the Holy Spirit, they have the joy of salvation, hope for heaven, and peace given from above. I've been going through many trials and afflictions from our country, from a broadcast company, and so on. But, you know, you've been with me for 28 years or 15 or 10 or 5 years, but have you ever seen me have lost joy from my face? Have you ever seen me losing thanksgiving? Have you ever seen me worrying and suffering in agony? You haven't. Why? Because the Almighty God is with me. If I don't commit sin, God is with me. So there is nothing to worry. If I practice the word, then rather trials bring blessings to me as a result. God said to Abraham to sacrifice Isaac, and Abraham did with faith. Then he was given a word of tremendous blessings. Also, because we have peace from above, because we have hope for heaven and peace in us, we can always rejoice. Even though when I was going through financial difficulty, I have never lost joy. Even though many people betrayed me, tried to kill me, I have never lost joy. Why? Because I have faith. Because God of hosts is with me, and He hear, hear my prayer. Also, because I believe He will lead me to blessings through it. There is no reason to lose joy. So, you've been watching me rejoicing always, praying always, and give thanks always, even in many trials and afflictions. What causes this joy to diminish is the fleshly thought. Fleshly thoughts cause us to see things in actuality and worry about them. But Jesus said, Do not be worried about your life as to what you will eat or what you will drink, nor for your body as to what you will put on. Does the, no, not, does the Lord not know? Does He not know why you are worried and concerned? Does He not know there is not enough food and drink for you? He doesn't know. However, He says, Do not worry about everyday life. As to what you will eat or what you will drink, not for your body, as to what you will put on. Have this faith. Then there is nothing to worry about. The Almighty God is our God, so there is nothing to worry about. Our Heavenly Father feeds even the birds in the sky and clothes the lilies of the field. Then is He going to let His children starve? God the Father feeds the birds in the air and clothes the lilies of the field, and He obviously provides His children with the necessities. Those who have spiritual thoughts will believe this fact and rejoice all the time, no matter what seems to happen. On the other hand, those who have fleshly thoughts cannot believe this fact. and they live with their worries and concerns. They have to rely on God the Father, but they rely on themselves like, uh, just like unbelievers. They rely on their strengths and wisdom, thinking, I have to work harder, and I have to do it this way. In the first level of faith, people cannot keep the Lord's Day holy. Uh, suppose they run a grocery store. They might think, Uh, I gotta make money, then I can pay the bills and pay the employees. If I close my store, especially on Sundays, how much I, how much do I lose? With fleshly thoughts, they can obey. However, if they do not have fleshly thoughts and have faith, they are willing to obey because God blesses them for the other six days if they keep the Lord's day holy. And well, the Lord's day should be kept holy because it is a blessed day and because it is one of the Ten Commandments. Even though they lose money, they have to keep the day holy. But Father promises to bless them if they obey. Therefore, but for fleshly thoughts, everyone keeps the Lord's day holy by faith. They rely on their strengths and wisdom, thinking, I have to work harder and I have to do it this way. And if the things do not go as they want, they become disappointed. As this, uh, I mean, the same principle applies when we obey the word telling us to pray without ceasing. If we have fleshly thoughts, we will just see the things as they appear to be, and it's difficult to obey the word. 
We might give excuses saying, I'm too busy to pray. I'm too tired after working all day, and I don't have energy to pray. Even though we pray, we might just babble. We might pray without purpose and focus just to fill up the time. But what would the Holy Spirit tell us? He tells us the verse in Luke 22:46, saying, Why are you sleeping? Why are you dozing? You have to pray with faith and love with all your heart. But why are you praying in all kinds of thoughts when you pray? Our Lord says to the disciples, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not enter into temptation. Get up and pray so that you will not give uh, into temptation. Here, does the Lord not know His disciples were tired from morning? They were with the Lord, serving around Him. Our Lord Jesus didn't rest and prayed and preached the gospel and healed the sick people. This is the way our Lord Jesus spent time. Today and tomorrow, the disciples should follow the Lord and serve and help around Him. The time our Lord Jesus said uh, this was night time. They are tired, and so uh, they cannot but doze in a physical sense, right? Our Lord also knows the situation that His disciples were tired but, and must be dozing. However, He said, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not enter into temptation. He also reminds us of Philippians 4, 6 that says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. You worry because there are many things to worry about, right? But God says, be anxious for nothing. Elders, those who do businesses, do you remember the word of the book of James? Ask in faith without any doubting, for such people cannot receive answer. So do not doubt. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything but prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God with thanksgiving. How can those who are worried give thanks? So they can't give thanks. But God says not to do so. He says not to be anxious for anything and ask in thanksgiving. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything but prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. This is faith. If you truly believe in God Almighty, the Almighty, you can do it. The reason is that there are many promises of God in the Bible. Whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. First John says, If our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from Him anything we ask. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. There are so many words of blessing. If you believe in the promises, there is nothing to worry about. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Him who strengthens me. Who is the one that strengthens me? It is God the Almighty and the Lord. I can do all things through Him and in the truth and not in the, in the untruth. The book of First uh, John says, Ask whatever you wish, and it will be given you. Here it says, Beloved. There is no way for beloved ones of God to ask for things of untruth. That's why Father God ask, uh, says, Ask whatever you wish. Father God knows His beloved ones would ask Him in a proper way in the Lord. I can do all things. I can do all things. Also, He urges us to pray according to the will of God. What kinds of prayers are heard and answered by God? As I explained many times, we have to follow prayer as a habit. Our Lord Jesus prayed habitually, kneeling down before God, and we have to pray with faith and love and with all our hearts. 
Praying in this way is the will of God. You have to pray like this, praying habitually, like the way you come to the Daniel prayer meeting every day. And three times a day, according to the Bible, and kneeling down, remember our Lord Jesus kneeled down in prayer? Our Lord Jesus kneeled down and prayed fervently. With His sweat became like drops of blood falling to the ground. kneeling down and with all his heart. When we pray to God the Almighty, we cannot pray casually. We must kneel down in prayer. Suppose you went to see somebody to ask something. Can you just sit casually and say to the person, I need some money. How much can you give me? No. You have to kneel down and politely ask, I need some money. Please help me. Moreover, to God the Almighty, it is no wonder to kneel down and pray. However, you cannot kneel down in the Daniel prayer meeting because you have to sit on the chair. In other cases, you have to kneel down in prayer. I'm telling you again, kneel down and pray with faith and love and with all your heart. Prayer without faith is futile. God does not listen to it. Prayer without love is also futile. We, you have to pray with faith and love, without idle thoughts and without babbling on. Those, those, um, those, uh, those who, those during prayer, you do is because you are praying with all kinds of thoughts, because you are not praying with all your heart, and because you are not praying with faith and love. We have to earnestly cry out and pray fervently. For example, even though we hear that we have to cry out in prayer, we think, isn't it better to meditate quietly? In the Bible, God always says to cry out to Him when you pray. But you think the other way around with your fleshly thoughts. We might worry about other people thinking, wouldn't this person next to me hear my prayers if I cry out? Why do you worry about other people listening to your prayer? Just stay focused on your prayer. Wouldn't you think I am strange? If other people look at you strangely, they're strange. So do not mind others. Thankfully, I was inspired to cry out in prayer since I was a new believer. I didn't know the truth clearly from the beginning, but I just wanted to cry out and went up to the mountains to pray alone. In the church, I couldn't cry out. Crying out was banned, but I was inspired to cry out. Also, I was an introvert and I felt kind of shy crying out when other people were around. So I often went to mountains to pray. You might say, hey, you also mind others when you pray. I was a new believer at the time. Not anymore. I was an introvert then. I go to the prayer center in the mountain. After breakfast, I take a Bible, a hymnal, and a blanket high up to the mountain where, where nobody is there. There, I pray all day long and then come down at the dinner time. After dinner, I participate in the evening meeting. Then I pray a little bit more. Then I sleep. And then the next day comes. This was the routine of my prayer life. I later came to hear the voice of the Lord, and as I also learned the Word of God, I was convinced that it is the will of God to cry out in prayer. Also, I came to learn the will of God with regard to how we are supposed to pray. It is important to pray according to the will of God, not according to my will, but according to the, to the will of God. We, must to, we have to pray the way God wants us to, wants us to pray, according to His will. If we pray as we desire in our fleshly thoughts, how can such prayer be accepted by God? It cannot please God, or can we receive answer to it? Of course, I believe many of you have passed the level of using such fleshly thoughts. But among the newcomers to the church, some of them still have such thoughts. 
The reason why you cannot obey the word, give thanks in all circumstances, is also because of the fleshly thoughts. Everyone can be thankful when there are good things. Even unbelievers can be thankful for good things happen to them. But some believers do not give thanks when there are situations in which they cannot be thankful. Some believers receive the solutions to various problems at the moment they accept the Lord, while others receive them as they continue their life in faith. As their faith grows, their problems are resolved and they are getting healthier in accordance with their faith. Here, if you think just such thoughts as, I am not rich, I am not healthy, I don't have peace of family, so it's natural that I'm not thankful, then you have to realize it is also a flash of thought. If you insist on saying that, that is the way it goes and it will be going. If you believe in the Word of God and obey the Word of God and give thanks to God even in a difficult situation, then Father God will make a way for you to give you things to be thankful. Even though the environment where you are placed is hard and things are screwed, if you confess your thanksgiving to God from the bottom of your heart, not reluctantly, how lovely in the sight of God Even in the distress, my child gives thanks to me. I should give him a blessing quickly. I should answer him quickly so that you this way. Regarding thanksgiving, it is said that there is nothing to lose, right? You have nothing to lose. Obey the word of God, then the impossible will become possible, and the possible will become even better. If you think it is natural that you cannot be thankful, you have to realize it is also a flashy thought and you have to break it down. Actually, there are many things to be thankful. You know the spiritual meanings of why you have to rejoice always, why you have to watch and pray, and why you have to be thankful. So, be thankful. If you can see with the eyes of faith, you can be thankful for anything and everything in any situation. You can find the reasons to give thanks in all things. All things. Also, if you give thanks with faith in the Holy Spirit, you will actually have things to give thanks. The Almighty God can change the bad situation into good conditions and problems into prosperity. It's just as Jesus said in Mark 9.23, If you can, all things are possible to him who believes. There is nothing i s p o s s i b l e By faith, everything is possible. It is the will of God for us to re- always rejoice, pray, and give thanks with faith in any kind of situation. John 14.1 says, Do not let your heart be troubled. Those who are troubled in the heart, repent. The Word of God says, Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. Believe in God. Believe in the Lord. Believe in the Word of God. Then do not let your heart be troubled. Live your Christian life just like this. Then your Christian life will be easy and happy. Father God will lead you easily and happily. Because you are not doing so, because you use fleshly thoughts in your believing life, you cannot receive answer to your problems like poor people are still poor. 1 Peter 5.7 says, Casting all your anxiety on Him because He cares for you. Now, what is Father God telling us? Cast all your anxiety on Him. Brothers and sisters, if you can give your worries and cares to somebody, you're willing to do it, right? If somebody is willing to go i n g to take care of your worries and cares, of course you will let him take them. However, we have somebody to pray of all our debts, somebody who is going to take our worries and cares and burdens. Who is He? God the Almighty, our Father God, and our Lord. So leave it to Him. Then He will take care of it. How awesome! Then why do you grasp this good word of blessing? How, why, why, why you do not gra- 
grasp this good word of blessing. Man cannot do it, but God the Almighty can do, can do any, everything. You can give all your worries to Him. He is our Father. Our Lord is our Bridegroom. Just leave it to Him. Cast all your anxiety on Him because He cares for you. God is telling you. The Lord is telling us, do not worry about anything, but just rely on me. If we do not utilize anything, any thinking, but just obey the word like children do, the Lord will see our faith and change the situations. It is very easy to receive the solutions and answers to problems, but as long as you have fleshly thoughts, it is never something easy to receive such answers. It's a piece of cake, but you feel it is too hard if you have fleshly thoughts. And you can never obey. That's why fleshly thoughts are always hostile to God. And fleshly thoughts can never please God. It's because you have the knowledge of the Word, but you do not apply it to yourselves. Just like the time when you didn't know God, you just try to solve the problem yourselves. Thus, you rely on the worldly methods, and if they don't work out, you become disheartened. You cannot rejoice, pray, or give thanks. Brothers and sisters, It would be so good if we can have faith to rely on the Almighty God and the Lord as soon as we accept the Lord. But we can't do, we can't do that because we cannot cast away overnight the untruth that fill our heart. When we first open the door of our thoughts and the door of our heart and accept the Lord, the Holy Spirit comes into our heart. With the help of the Holy Spirit, we can believe the Almighty God, the Creator, who created things out of nothing. But those who have just accepted the Lord have the spiritual faith which is, the, which is barely enough to receive salvation. They believe in God the Creator, who created heaven and earth and everything from nothing, but their faith is not as great as to be able to apply it in their everyday life. So, as they demolish their flesh and thoughts, namely to the extent that they rid themselves of the untruths in their heart, their spiritual faith grows. As they experience the power of faith that can create things from nothing, their flesh and thoughts are removed and their spiritual faith grows. When their spiritual faith grows up and reaches the fourth level of faith or higher, they will be thankful for one common thing. They will be thankful that they are leading a life of faith in a church where they can experience the power of faith. In this church, we can experience the things that are impossible for men become possible by God's power. As you have spiritual, such special experiences, your fleshly thoughts will be demolished. The knowledge of untruth that is input in this world will be shattered, so the spiritual faith quickly grows up. For example, most of you, uh, most of you do not go to hospitals, but receive healings through prayer when you become sick. But you didn't have this kind of faith right from the beginning. You came to have the faith to rely on God by having seen many others who are healed through faith and having experienced some things yourself. As your spiritual faith grows up to reach the mature level, you do not see the reality of things, but just look up to God with the eyes of faith. Even in trials that are like big waves, you just rely on God with faith. It's because you have the faith that the reality is only what is seen and it can be changed through the prayer because the Almighty God is your Father. Because your fleshly thoughts are de destroyed, you only hear the voice of the Holy Spirit who gives you firm faith. In Matthew 11.30, Jesus said, For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So if we shatter the fleshly thoughts, it will be easy to obey the word. When you shatter your fleshly thoughts, God works according to your faith. There is nothing hard because it is the way to heaven, the way to blessing, the way to answer, the way to to healing and the way to prosperity of your soul. When you walk in the way of prosperity, we are protected in all things and we will be happy. Therefore, I hope you will quickly demolish your flesh and thoughts and lead a life of faith with comfort. Like I explained before, 
Fleshly thoughts hinder you from growing in faith and receiving answers. Because fleshly thoughts, you are worried and concerned. Your life is hard. If you just break down your fleshly thoughts, you will be prosperous in all things, and you will be receive answers easily. And you will please God, and you will give glory to God greatly. Brothers and sisters in Christ, let me give uh, the conclusion. Recently, I had a very serious injury. As I was closing the sliding doors in a hurry, my finger was caught in a gap between them, and the bones were shattered. As you know very well, I never went to any hospital. Each week, you've seen how God is working on it. My injured right little finger swallowed up, swollen up like three times bigger than my left counterpart and radish. The bone was broken. The finger nail was shattered. I never put on the cast, nor did I get an injection or a medicine. But how is my finger now? Did the cure take place very slowly, or was there any problem? Not at all. God the Father healed it so perfectly. Had I used my fleshly thoughts, I couldn't have just left my finger just like that. But I didn't have any worries. I completely believed that God would heal me. I'd rather have peace of mind. So I proclaimed to you, saying, Watch me how God will be working on me. I was rather thankful because the church members would realize what true faith is and they would gain greater faith. Even in great problems, if we just hear the voice of the Holy Spirit without utilizing fleshly thoughts, we'll have such results. Romans 8.6 says, For the mindset on the flesh is death, but the mindset on the spirit is life and peace. Do any of you have a big problem lying ahead of you? I hope you will take the problem as a chance of blessing to demolish your fleshly thoughts. When you demolish your fleshly thoughts, faith is given to you, and everything will be done according to your faith. According to your faith, will it be done to you? There is nothing is impossible. If you can, said Jesus, all things are. are possible to him who believes. There is nothing impossible. I pray in the name of the Lord that you will walk in spirit and not in flesh so that you will come forth as children of spirit who can please God. Let's pray thinking over the message. それは命与える救いの